Okay, we're live. Hi, everyone. Thank you again for joining us on another virtual jug session. Today, I'm happy to have with me with Max. Hey, Max, how are you? Hey, Rader. I'm good. Wonderful. Good. Uh, it's a real pleasure to have you here with us. So you. if you want to join us on our Slack, please go to virtualjug.com and you can find the invite link on the top of the page. After you go to Slack, you can join us on the live session channel and we'll be happy to follow you over there and uh, relay any questions that you have for Max. So for today, I know that Max has a very awesome session about JBang. Is that correct, Max? That is correct, yes. So I'm pretty sure a lot of people are really uh, excited to hear about uh, JBang. So without any further delay, please, Max, your stage is yours. Uh, feel free to start whenever you want. I will. OK, so thank you, guys. So the title of the talk is Using Java to Make Java Better. And um, yeah, that's what JBang is about, is take Java and, and make some of the stuff that I kind of felt was a bit heavy in Java. And uh, you know, this year is Java 25 years uh, anniversary, so it's kind of fun to look at you know, where we are with these things. Um, so the good things about Java, it's just, well, the things I like about it, it's a static type language. It has a lot of IDE support. There's a lot of monitor tools and debugging. There's a massive ecosystem, especially like the whole Maven Central uh, and Maven and Gradle, that whole system of standards and conventions and a slew of all big libraries. And recently also the whole VM and Java language has kind of refreshed itself, like new Java features, the JVM with Gradle, fast release cycles and things like, you know, Focus, which I work on in my day job. Um, it, it is coming around. Um, and before I just, yes, yeah, so the is in the background here. That's what I do on a day-to-day -day work. Uh, JBang is separate from Quarkus, but later on you'll see there's a little connection. But what I'm talking about here is it's not tied to Quarkus is in any way. And uh, so, anyway, so getting into the bad things. Uh, and this was the, just coincidentally yesterday, uh, one of the guys from JetBrains tweeted out uh, on, on top of him, on opinion, that the standard way we do source main Java and whole boilerplate directory was uh, harmful. And it makes it, you know, small products hard to start. And it just makes this, oh, if you do Java, you're doing heavy things or big things. And uh, I must say, I, I very much agree with him. I took a year, I, I, well, I was doing Java for 20 plus years. And two years ago, I took a year off doing something completely different. Uh, and during that phase, I then came back, having used the computer for a few months, having programmed for, for a while. And I came back and Java is just heavy. Like it's just, when you touch it and run with it, there's just so much things you have to do. You have to install Java, you have to get an IDE configured, you have to have X, Y, Z in there. Um, and there's like a follow-up guy here that, that said that he has students who prefer to learn C++ rather than Java. And that just doesn't sound right to me. Um, so there is something about this where, where like Java, even though that we are used to using it and it seems simple enough, uh, it just has a, a, an overhead, something built into it. Um, so when I say what's bad about Java, it's that I, to get started, I have to use Maven Gradle upfront. Like there's no, like when you start using Python or ba Bash script or Node or that kind of thing, there's just this, this whole ceremony just doesn't, doesn't exist. Um, there's a lot of scaffolding to directories. There's a lot of flags in Java. If you use, look at Java and all the power tools it has, the way the command line works is just very complex if you look at it. Um, and this has been the overhead I talked about. And just this whole thing that because there's this middle overhead and this whole ceremony about things, you uh, hardly never use this for scripting automation. Uh, so this is actually what triggered me to get into JBang and, and, and start uh, making it was I saw in Quarkus project that we are using K script and Bash script as a script written in Kotlin that when I looked at it, it was just, this is just Java, a little, this, why are we requiring installing not only the, the JVM, but also Kotlin or if it was a Groovy shop, it's the same thing. Like, why is it that that is needed? Um, why do we use Node.js for automation? It's that kind of thing. Uh, and I like two years before I went on the sabbatical, I actually moved only able to go because that was what I wanted for, for 
I need it. And it was a refreshing experience, but I'm happy to be back in Java. But other people are going over and trying other things and they uh, get there, which is might be perfect for them. But in many cases, I, I, I feel like they are applying these languages because Java doesn't fill in that gap. Um, and that's, you know, that's what I, I wanted to fix with JBack. So before I get too long, I want to show you what it is so you can get an idea of it. So this is my terminal. I have, oh, I'll just make a directory called demo. Oops, I can't type. There we go. So I'm in a directory completely blank. I'll start by running jbang init, hello Java. Gives me a file and I'm just gonna see there's nothing special about it. It's, oh, let me get it so you can see it. Right, it's just a hello with a outprint line. There's some stuff in the top, I'll get back to it. But you see, it's just Java. Um, so I can just go and say, hello Java, and it's it runs. I can also go and say, hello Java, as a command, and let, for example, put bjf in front, and it runs. Right? That is me writing and compiling and building Java without using uh, knowing anything about Java, Java C, uh, Maven, Gradle, that kind of thing. It's just there. Um, let's move it a bit uh, higher up. Uh, what if you want to do uh, dependencies, like the whole big ecosystem of Maven? Right? I'm just going to copy a little hello Java from another directory. And in this, I'm now doing a little bit more. Uh, you'll see I have more code. There's this thing called Figlet, which is just a tool to write, you know, ASCII banners. And again, the study what main with a Figlet convert on one line and text argument in. And you go like, okay, how do I run this thing? And I'll just go like, oh, oh let me just clear so you can see it. I'll go hello Java, and then we do put VDuff here again. And this time it's a new class, so it built it again, and it says hello VDuff. Uh, and actually, I'm just going to clear the cache just so you can see it. And I run it again. You see it's building jars. And oh, it, yeah, sorry. It should say result dependencies, but there is a cache that it, it keeps track of it. Um, but anyway, the main point is I'm now using a, a random dependency. This could be anything. It could also be JUnit or Camel or Hibernate or anything out there. As a dependency, like slash slash steps, the class, oh, sorry, the, the uh, GAV group artifact ver uh, version, and then just use any other kind of tool uh, on, on a computer kind of Java. And um, well, you go like, well, how do I edit these things? Well, you can go JBank edit. Um, and I'm just going to do, for example, code is my editor. I say JBank edit hello Java. So this will set up a temporary project. And now I'm in VS Code. And I have my hello Java in here, and I can run it. And I can should be able to content assist on this dependency. Right? And uh, it, if you'll notice that even though that I am just in a directory with a single file, JBang has set up like a mini temporary project where I can edit this in any IDE that is out there. Um, that was the very quick introduction of what JBang is. That is the fundamentals of kind of running these things. Um, and then you either go like, oh, wow, this is awesome, which I did when I created it. Uh, or you'd be like, wait, wait, we've, we've had some of this stuff before in Java. Why don't we use that kind of thing? Um, so let's see how current Java actually has it. So in Java 11, uh, there was, they added this notion that you could go and say uh, Java uh, and the main file, um, but or, or just running as a script. But there is some big issues with it. So first of all, uh, the file cannot be called Java. It has to be without Java. If, if it is Java, it will fail uh, with, with these, uh, the, the hash bang uh, in here. Uh, and that hash bang, it has to be uh, uh, 11. And then the good thing is, well, the bad thing is this breaks the IDE. So if you use the feature that's in Java 11, you can run it as a script, but you can't edit it in Java. 
and and that's just that's bad. That means it's kind of useless. like you lose all that infrastructure we we already have, right? So what Jebang does is all these things that improved over the years with Java, uh, we kind of just do better. Um, so the we can compile and build it once. So it's just Jbang the file. Um, we can handle dependencies, whereas the JDK doesn't have any notion of dependencies. It just supports the JDK. Uh, I can make these executable scripts on Linux and Mac. Windows doesn't have that notion. And IDE support, well, of course, there are IDE support for all these things, but it's not something you have to go and install uh, that IDE and know how to set it up to get started. In JBang, we, 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 we set it up for you. Um, and that's easy debugging, which I, oh, I forgot to mention, but I'll show you in, in, in a few seconds. So just to recap, what we've done is that we've added um, the trick to make it a script is this uh, uh, line is both Java and shell script. So there's a comment in front. And uh, that means it's valid Java, so it doesn't fail the IDE, but it's also a shell script on Linux and, uh, uh, and Mac. And the, the, the lines like jbang, the dollar zero, is just to pass arguments into jbang. And then when that's over, it exits. And um, so that means all the rest of the file is just completely ignored by, by the shell. And in the, 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 the source code, we of course have the slash as depths to get the dependencies. And you can have multiple of these. Uh, and that's it, that's, that's what's, what's there, right? Um, and it's all running once. You don't have to learn another tool chain. Uh, and behind the scenes, it doesn't do anything that you would do. It just calls out to Java and, and uses Java C, uh, sorry, calls out to Java C first, and then it runs uh, Java afterwards. And it also caches it. So if you run the same thing twice, we don't rerun it again. We don't, we don't do the rebuild again. Uh, so in, in principle, it's very, very basic. Um, the edit uh, thing I showed, uh, JBang edit uh, the, the file. So I showed it in VS Code. You also have this notion of live, which means that uh, it will monitor the directory. And then when you add dependencies, it's going to regenerate. So your IDE will pick up the, those new dependencies. And all this works for, uh, we I test and verify it works for all these IDEs. So Eclipse, Emacs, NetBeans, IntelliJ, Vim, Visual Studio Code. Code and actually last week I finally got access to code spaces and it works in there too. And other IDs, but these are the, the, the seven that uh, uh, currently is like direct support for. Okay, so that was kind of a very quick introduction to, to JBang itself. And now it's like, okay, what's the making Java easier part besides the, the stuff I got to? Um, well, one was I complained about the flags. So this is actually how you would run a debugger in Java, like Java agent lib, that whole thing. I can't even pronounce it. Um, and of course, you can use your IDE, you can use your mail and Gradle to just do this. But in JBang, you just go JBang slash slash debug, and you have a debugger. And it uses these conventions that are the normal ones. And if you want to fine tune it, sure. But just the out of box experience is, is much, much simpler. And below is just showing the ID, you know, stepping through these things uh, as any other uh, any other debugger can do in, with Java. Um, another thing is, well, once we had this all dependency stuff going, uh, how about we can run things? So we can run the Java. We can also run uh, JShell. So, for example, I'll show you here. I think I have. Well, maybe not. Where is it? Here we go. This is a Java shell. If you don't know what Java shell is, it's a thing that came in Java 9 that runs like gets you ability to run um, uh, uh, what's it called Java without classes. Uh, it's literally just scripts. Uh, you just want a text file to get passed pass up. Um, and the, the, the many of the thing in Java 9 is they added it, but it doesn't support arguments or parameters and stuff. In JBang, it does. So I, I can go and say JBang, hello, JShell, and just say, you know, uh, just say Quarkus. Okay. And now it's running JShell. It's a little bit slower, but again, um, with JBang, it's actually not possible to do this. 
Whereas before you couldn't, there was no convention to have a part in parameter or system properties, that kind of thing. The JBang you can. Um, and so that's that. But then we had that in place. We can also run a jar uh, as anything else. Uh, we have this thing what we call Swisslink or UL support. So I can have JBang and then any kind of UL and get the text from there. But we added in support for GitHub and GitLab, et cetera. So you can just run them directly. So for example, I actually have uh, a, tweet, a tweet I made and it'll say, oh, I'm gonna show you just two seconds how it looks like. This is my tweet back from in May. Uh, it's not very pretty, but it's code. And uh, it tells me uh, since the remote resource, I'm not just gonna run it for, for good reasons. I can just say trust it once. And then it, it runs uh, that script from that tweet. The Twitter, Twitter is like a gag thing, but you can do the same thing for, for GitHub. Um, let's see if I have one here. Here's, for example, um, an example for, for, for the JBang directory, a uh, JBang folder. I'm gonna go up here, you'll see this is a piece of Java code, there's some dependencies, and then just, you know, Ton of Java code, and this example is actually a JavaFX app. So download it, build it, run it. There should be a window in two seconds. There you go. I just launched a JavaFX app from with JBang, and again, no Maven, no Gradle, no setup, no that kind of thing. There you go. Let me go back to my presentation. And uh, on top of that, we can also run jars from GIVs. So one, you can refer to uh, uh, any Maven artifacts. So here is just a, a Quarker CLI I'm working on uh, on my data. And I refer to that uh, with JBang and then the jar, the coordinates, and it can run it. Um, and I'll show you just, you see here, again, same kind of idea. You run a jar and it gets the dependencies and voila, that's the command line tool for Quarkus that's coming, coming later on. Wait a minute, the point is we can run this code from anywhere. So it becomes easier to distribute and easier to access. Um, this is just the, uh, the screenshot for the, the jar FX. Um, another thing we added is what if um, one needs to use it a specific version of Java. Let's say I want to use records, um, which is a Java feature only feature, uh, Java, not Java, Java 14 feature. Um, so I know today I think Java 15 came out, but let's say you on 14. So we have this slash slash Java and a version number. If you put the version number, it says, I need this to be Java 14. And 14 plus just says 14 or higher. And what, uh, JBang will do is it will contact adopt open JDK, go and get the, sorry, if you, it will check your current Java. If that's uh, Java 14 or higher, that's good. If it's not, it's gonna get it for you. Um, and it will get it for Windows, Linux and Mac uh, on the right architecture, the whole thing uh, for any JDK that's available on the adopt JDK API. And you'll see in this example, I also have to enable some flags for for uh, Java 14, uh, for enable the preview feature. But again, in, in JBang, I can just add that to the header of the file to express this is what I want. Um, meaning this is now a self-contained description of the build, the run, the compile. And just think about it now that not only does this check the right version of Java, but if the only thing you have downloaded is JBang and this script, it will download Java for you. So you can now use these scripts to, like anyone who wants to learn Java, you don't have to tell them how to install Java and get started. It will do that for you. Um, you don't have to, um, you know, go and work with SDK man or some other packaging system, which it's still fully compatible with. You just JBang has it built in. So the get a start experience, the way you distribute this is much, much easier than traditional job. Um, yeah, this is how it looks like for the records one. It will download Java, it takes some time uh, and run. And I just, 
as I said before, if you have JAWA 14 installed, it's going to use it. It's not going to cost you anything, so to speak. Um, so it, it should give you the best of both worlds. Um, on top of that, another thing we've done is add a notion of aliases and catalogs. Um, so once you have all these mechanisms, uh, you start being, well, one of the things that I did uh, before I used JBang was uh, a lot of Python and Bash script for any kind of automation and work I did. Uh, since I made JBang, I just write on Java. I can debug it, I can test it, I can verify it, all that kind of thing. Um, but it gets a bit tedious to, to refer to them. So we, we, we wanted to have this notion of aliases so you can just say, hey, um, if I write hello, just make that hello Java. And this is a very trivial example, but it could be a longer argument or location or URL or uh, DAV. The idea is you just get this notion of, of shorthand uh, commands. Then we have, when we have that, we added this notion of, well, what if we had catalogs? Uh, so you, we actually had some catalogs on, um, that I can show. So for example, if I do this and say jbang alias list jbang dev, jbang dev is our GitHub um, location, you'll see that it has a list of uh, scripts. I also myself have some further there. So I can, for example, go and say jbang oh, properties jbang dev. So what happens here is it can say, hey, there's uh, on the properties alias at the jbang dev catalog, run it. And say, get the dependencies, build the jar, and this is just a tool that, that dumps out all the, the properties, right? And I think even I can have a command, say, here's user, so we work quickly, yeah, it prints out all the user ones. So this suddenly becomes a way of distributing these different locations, oh, sorry, uh, scripts. And uh, let me just show you how this looks like. So the logic we use is that any uh, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket um, name we will look up. And then there's just, uh, this is JBank dash catalog. We look for JBank catalog JSON. And in there is just JSON that says, if you run this, do this description, that kind of thing. Um, and overall, that just gives us this, you know, massive. Oh, where's my presentation? Here we go. Uh, flexibility, and we can have these default commands that works. Uh, you can have your own commands in your own repository, or you can have, for example, the JRuby guys. They added JBang script that when you say JBang run at JRuby and then the expression, it actually prints out. It's actually, you can run Ruby via JBank. Um, but the idea is that this, with this catalog notions, you suddenly have a mechanism to distribute and run scripts. Um, these can also be versions and tag, that kind of thing. Um, but it removes this whole uh, need for setting up environments. So if you want to do scripting for a node, I have to install node and, and, uh, and that, that shebang. Um, I have to install like NPM install, uh, et cetera. Uh, which is all good. There's nothing bad with it. It's just it didn't exist for Java. Now it now it does. That uh, you can run these scripts, you can install the catalogs, um, you can refer to them, and as I said before, you can just download JBang, and it will get Java for you if you need it. Um, uh, yeah, that's kind of the idea of this you know, trying to be as easy as possible and, and make it Java more accessible. Um, and just to kind of give this idea, like before, like if you want to get started with, with Java, you have to download Java, download an IDE, because if you're the beginner, there's no way you're going to figure this out uh, without an IDE. Um, uh, create the folders or make the sort of like this whole uh, setup, write the build cradle, write the palm XML, figure out how to dispute it, make install, like that whole complexity. Um, and of course, for, it doesn't mean that this should go away. It still exists for more complicated apps. But for, for basic Java, with JBang, this is suddenly just you, you init the app, you write the scripts, you can push it to a git into that catalog, and um, 
off you go with the and run the, the different uh, files. Hey, Max, uh, we have yes. a couple of questions here for you if you want to take them. Is that okay? Sure, that's good. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, so uh, we have two, actually two questions from Bruce. So the first one is how well does JBang handle transitive dependencies and the potential for dependency hell? Oh, yeah. So I haven't solved that problem completely. So um, if <laughs> So let me show you. So the question is, if we don't do anything special. So JBang, uh, uh, right now we support just dependencies and transit dependencies. So um, let me go and find an example here. Which one is a big one? I can do hello CLI, I guess. Maybe not. Uh, Ah, okay, no, that's only one. But anyway, the, the, the idea is that any dependency you have here, slash, slash, steps, info, pico, CLI, uh, you will get that and it's, it's dependencies. Um, so, uh, and we don't currently support the notes of BOM, which is the thing that, that is enabling and Gradle, um, but we will have eventually. So right now, yes, it doesn't, it's the same problems. So those, those, those are not solvable by, I think, any human. <laughs> Uh, right now, and it's the same with you know, if you as soon as you start using Node or uh, Python and stuff, you have the same kind of problem. So in that case, yeah, no, no, no specific, no, no, no there's no difference here uh, in JBang. Okay, and um, yeah. when when you're downloading dependencies on JBang, uh, does it download them to its own folder, or it uses like the Maven folder that you have on your box, it, or? It, it will use the by default. It will use the the tilde m2 like home dear m2 directory. Uh, there is a setting you can set it to point somewhere else if you want it to be isolated. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it, it does what you kind of expect. It will reuse what you have. Um, and uh, yeah, it's quite this to give an idea what if someone understand what's actually going on behind the scene. So JBang has a folder called in the home directory JBang. Again, you can you can move it. Uh, let me just do this. You'll see here. So all this stuff is internal details. It's just it just don't don't try and understand it just for forget it. But uh, basically, oh that's very we have a cache of the different downloads. Um, here's the projects that we generate with edit saying the, the build and, and the symbolic link. Here are for the URLs, there's a cache version of it. We have the catalogs, these are all in the JBank folder, but actually the, all dependencies are in uh, m dot, uh, dot m2 or wherever you want it to be, basically. Okay, and the second question from Bruce was, um, how about support for Project Jigsaw or multi-release jars? Uh, so Jigsaw, so Jigsaw means the module system, right? So um, we ha I haven't done anything specific for modules yet, um, except uh, the JavaFX thing, right? JavaFX is using DevOps modules behind the scenes, or not behind the scenes, it's, it's depending on it. Um, but I haven't found many use cases of, of, of it, but uh, there's nothing fundamentally, uh, there's no reason why JBank couldn't get support for it if someone can come with a use case, why we should. Um, and what was, what was the other question you had? Yeah, you so had there Jigsaw. was the Jigsaw and multi-release jars. Yeah, so, uh, well, in multi-release jars is when you want to compile, you want to distribute one jar for um, different versions of Java. So I don't have that need because I'm building the projects. <laughs> um, so it fits to your Java version. Um, but there's nothing specific supported for it. Uh, but I also don't see why it wouldn't work. Like, like again, we're just using Java behind the scenes. So, uh, but um, so yeah, I, I believe we can run them, but uh, building them is, is something we don't do. But again, it should be trivial to add it into it. Mm -hmm. And then we do have another, actually what was already answered and he did confirm it here, but it was from Bruno. He was asking if you can install JBAM from SDK man. I just confirmed you can. 
Yes, you can. Uh, and a bunch of other places. I'll get to all those different uh, scenarios in, in the, at the end. OK. Uh, sorry about that. Just carry on. OK. Good. So yeah, so uh, another thing that happened recently, this is the, the one more thing, uh, is that I actually found a way to marry my hobby and my, my day job. Um, that uh, I kind of always wanted to get to write um, like certain small REST services and like uh, I set out to write a GitHub bot in, in JBang. And I was like, ah, oh, I want to use Quarkus program model for it. But because of the way uh, Quarkus works, uh, I can't just run compile it because Quarkus needs to do some build time processing. Um, well, well, look and behold, from uh, talking to the team back and forth uh, in Quarkus 1.8 final, which is coming out, I think, today or tomorrow, depending on, on the news, uh, you can actually run uh, scripts via Quarkus. Um, and it, the best thing is just to show how it works. Um, I'll go back to my demo catalog. You just remove this hello Java. And I'm just going to do, uh, in this case, I'm just, uh, where is this? Q rest, right? Quarkus rest. And it, it has a file now. And this just says, you know, user dependencies. Uh, rest ec uh, one eight final um some options here so the, these are currently required you to put in uh, in the later version i hope you can remove them but these are just things you have to do for, to use quarkus um, and then it's just a quarkus app there's no nothing special in here and i just go um jbang hello nope no it's not what i called it what, was, what they call it quarkus rest and it goes into get dependencies, build the jar. And you see here, it does the post build with Quark JBang. That's that's JBang saying, is in any of these dependencies, are there something they want to participate in a JBang build? And then Quark says, yes, I would like to. And then it does the thing, and it gives the control back to JBang, which then run the thing. Um, and this is a very basic app. You see, there's no index HTML right now, but I have the hello. Things say hello from Quarkus with JBang dev. And then the first question you might have, like, well, you know, that's great and all, but how about different resources? So I actually have uh, the same app here, but with a little twist that it has the same thing, you know, dependencies, and but it has this thing called slash that file says add meta int resources index HTML, put the index XML file, which is there's a file in this folder that has it one in there. So if I go Quarkus rest again, there's the different file and it does go through the same thing. And you'll see, I'll run it up, where's the link? Here you go. And that's the front page of or index HTML of that little app. Um, and again, you can mount any kind of resource in here uh, using that, that, that approach. Um, and the cool thing is, let me just do, where is the Quarkus rests? I'm just going to add in, for example, uh, this feature for Swagger. And this is a runner up. You can just build, runs it. You see it does a little bit more this time. Oh, it didn't fail. Oh, it failed. Oh, bad demo. <laughs> uh, anyway, no worries. Well, I wanted to show... all the time. Of course, uh, but the thing. <laughs> so anyway, what I want to, if there it works, um, it will add that extension and it will have the the Swagger UI in there. Why why it failed? No, it worked two minutes ago. So anyway. Um, this is something that is there in JBang. You have to use 0.45 and higher, and Quarkus 1.8 final or higher. Um, we have this uh, slash slash queue config, which is ignored by uh, JBang, but Quarkus can use for doing all this configuration. Um, and uh, the cool thing is, it, you get access to the JBang features. So I can actually go JBang slash slash or dash dash native 
and get a native binary. Uh, you have to have GraalVM installed. Uh, and let me just, since I'm already breaking all the demo gods, uh, I'm just going to try. And uh, Yeah, don't, don't annoy them. No, no, but let, let's just see if I can uh, be really, there we go. So, it, so, so you get access to all the stuff that Quarkus has access to. Um, uh, not only native builds, assuming this works, uh, but also container deployment, so uh, container building. So uh, you can also pass in a parameter and it will build a container using JIP, for example, uh, or um, uh, the, something that doesn't work right now, but will in the future is the community extensions. So we can actually write a little script, oh, sorry, a, a, a JBang app that has a full REST endpoint or whatever we want to do and package as a container and deploy it to Kubernetes or Knative or serverless or that kind of thing. Um, and uh, yeah, so not all the different features in Quarkus is there yet. Let me just while you wait for it to load. Um, so this is experimental, but I wanted to mention it because I think this really uh, ties the beginner getting started scripting, uh, exploring Java with JBang to like full blown enterprise apps, serverless functions, that kind of thing. Um, and I want to highlight there's no dependency from JBang to Quarkus. It's just, this is one specific example where the way that Quarkus works and JBang works, they, they kind of, when you put them together, kind of this magic kind of happened. Um, and the build's still running. It takes a few minutes for, for native builds, but I'll, I'll, I'll show you when it, it comes back. Um, so we talked, you talked about how we get it. So uh, if you go to JBang dev slash download, uh, let's go to it so you can see it. <clears throat> there we go. Uh, we have, I've, well, I have made like for Windows, for Linux and Mac. So on Windows, you can use chocolate, chocolate tea, or you call it, uh, a scoop, or you can download the jar. Uh, on Linux, uh, SDK is the, the recommended one. I also have these uh, copper builds, which works on CentOS, Fedora, Makia, and OpenSUSE um, if you want to use a package manager. Uh, on Mac, there's JBang, there's Homebrew, again, manual. Um, you can, we have a Docker for, um, uh, if you want to run it uh, with a Docker container, for, um, Docker and Quay. And uh, it also is available as a uh, GitHub action. So this is actually something uh, we use quite a lot in Quarkus that all the automation we have, well, not all of it, but a lot of the reason that automation is instead of being a node script or a, a TypeScript based thing that we are only a subset of us can, can maintain, these are now just uh, pure Java, Java products. And so the build for native actually just completed. So the demo guards, you know, work for me. So you'll see here, it did all this output and it started in 0 0.37 seconds, which only happens with a native. And if I run it again, you will see it starts in 002.4. So JBang behind the scenes built this app for me. Uh, and again, just remember, this is just the local file. This could have been an HTTP URL. It could be a GitHub URL. It could be anything outside and JBang will build and run it for you. So it, it makes it super, super easy to distribute and run apps in, in, or scripts, whatever thing you want to put there. Okay. Um, hey Max, we have uh, a, yes. another question here. This is from Pierre. Uh, yeah. His question is, will we be able to use JBang with several Java files, uh, group in a directive, for example? Yeah, so uh, it will be it will be possible. It it is not there yet. Uh, initially, I said let me just try and do one file, and I've been able to do a lot of stuff with it. But now, when I had Quarkus in there, it becomes okay. Now I want to do like real apps, um, and it's so yeah, it will come. And it's actually the one issue that I want to do before calling it JBang 1.0, right? So. Um, it's not there yet. Uh, it it will come. It I know how to do it. It's just yeah, have to, how to get it get it done. Um, okay. So anyway, you, you can get it in all these different uh, places. And uh, I, you know, if anything of those who are listening are here, 
um, you know, go and try and use it. Give me feedback. It's super easy to get it as a you can get it in almost any any kind of form or fashion uh, you can get to. Uh, you know, use it for any automation you want to do. Do one up scripts instead of writing your own bass or, or, or node. Um, a thing I, I learned since I get access to Gearbang or, or build it is now creating and trying an API is super easy. I just I go and and and, and fetch the dependency and um, uh, look it up and try the API. Like I, I don't need uh, any complex setup. Um, you know, write your own catalog of scripts, share those out, uh, and be aware of it. Um, if you're writing docs for anything, uh, you you have any API you want to document. If you just add that little header on top, uh, your your code, you can just literally just copy paste that code into a file and run it. Um, uh, I've used it uh, successfully a few times now by when I open a bug in, in an issue, I just, again, I just copy the code in, it runs uh, as is. Uh, again, don't need to have a, a full Maven created pro, uh, setup just for reproducing an issue. Um, I haven't tried this yet, but I'm trying to actually also get into and set, find a university or something who wants to to try and, and, and teach Java with as little overhead as possible, where I think JPEG would be interesting. So if any one of you guys know someone who wants to try this with anyone, like you know, I would be, I'd love to hear the feedback or if I can be of any help, that would be great. And, I, and the latest, you can write a Quarkus app with, with JPEG. Um, and uh, what I actually, <laughs> Really is uh, one way is to you know spread the awareness of this. I, I have a there's a funny reaction that every time I I mention and talk about this, there's always people go like, why would I need this? Like this is not like you know Gradle and Maven and stuff. It's just fine and it, it is. It's not like great. is not taking away from what you use Gradle and Maven for, but uh, it just simplifies a ton of stuff and. Um, yeah, so I, I really, you know, if anything you can share about this on your social media, you know, please do or to your friends. Um, I'm really trying to make people aware and also just so we can improve things um, uh, in there. And uh, yeah, lately we've had a, a bunch of contributors, which are, you know, very thankful to. Um, and if you, you know, if you have that year to write a, a, a JBank script and a, and a GIST and a GitHub or something, you know, share it on Twitter. Uh, I'll add you to the contributor, and um, yeah, that's kind of my my story. <laughs> Wonderful, I, no, that, that was great. I, I have a few things more, but I think if there's more questions, I want to take those first. Yeah, we do have a couple of more questions. So um, the reason is coming from Mateo. He's asking, um, how does it work when you have the unit test? Are you able to J unit or test uh, it in any way? Yeah. So yeah. So I. Don't have that yet. Uh, well, so let me. Let's see. I don't have any explicit support for it because to do it, I'll have to have multiple source files, right? Um, so there are uh, the, a colleague of mine, Gallagher. He actually wrote his JPEG, He wrote his scripts with test in the script. So he just runs JBang slash test as test. So JBang the script, and then test. So he builds into itself. Um, but what I want to do is you can literally, you can imagine once you have um, multiple source files, so let's say you have main.java, you can have test main.java, which just would depend on on one or the other. And then we could write, you could, there's no, you can run JUnit test for it. Um, so yeah, nothing specific for it now, but you can use JUnit API and all that kind of thing uh, in there. That, that reminds me, a, a little thing I actually done uh, lately. Um, so this is a bit, uh, where is it? Just because, oh, here we go. So this, this what I'm showing now is actually a Quarkus JBang script uh, command line. We're using Hibernate. Um, and it's not exactly J unit, but just something I, I realized the other day is there's this thing called product called test containers. So I can start different Docker containers like a Postgres SQL. So in here, I'm just running, this is a Quarkus little app. And you'll see in here, I just set up a Postgres container. So I'm using JBank to orchestrate a little Docker, uh, 
some mini Docker Compose kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it wasn't directed. It was just something you use with JUnit. You, you know, just, there's nothing to prevent you for it. But um, with um, uh, what's it called? Uh, with the multiple source files, we can also do like a more like JBang test and build that in. So uh, not yet, will come. Wonderful. Uh, then we have another question from Bruce, uh, which yeah. says, um, does JBang integrate with Jenkins? And I know that, and, and for any CI for that matter, I know that you've been extensively working with the GitHub Actions and JBang for Quarkus, right? Yes. So um, I had someone propose to me. So yeah, for, for you, GitHub Actions, uh, there is a GitHub Action for it. You can just use it. Um, I had an issue. Someone asked the same question, like, can I make it run easily in Jenkins? And someone said, I hey, do it like there's a Groovy support in Jenkins where you can, can do it. And I looked at how it works. And I just feel like if someone wants to do it, I'll be very welcome to, to review it and include it. Uh, but what we did instead is we did, we can do this thing called wrapper. Um, let me just do demo two, right? So let's say you have, oh, it doesn't matter, here. So I have a, a folder with pro, uh, products. Uh, I can actually go and do JBang wrapper install. So if you know Gradle wrappers or Maven wrappers, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, so now in here is um, a JBang self-contained. This will run uh, this thing uh, as you want. So this, this means that if you have a project, you can commit this wrapper in there and you can run that from anywhere uh, with a shell script or anything in, whether that's Jenkins or anything else I can't think of with a build system. Um, so yeah, that, that's the way of doing it. Um, if someone wants to add like a, a actual Jenkins um, uh, plugin, uh, I would love to get that contribution, but uh, until now I haven't, I decided not to do it because it seemed to be very little extra value at least. Okay, and when, okay. when do you think you're going to have a 1.0? Soon. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, the, no promises. <laughs> no, uh, the, no, the, the, the multi-file thing, and I want to stabilize the Quarkus one just because uh, I want to get, get it working. So I don't, as it's been, um, what is it? It's been, I started in back in January and we've had, how much is it? 100 and, 114 releases. Uh, so, you know, it moves fast. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's like a release every two or three days. Um, so no, I, I, I'm not gonna promise a 1.0, uh, but it's it's fairly stable for the basic stuff. But yeah, I, I, I'll say my goal is to do it within the year, within this year, but... Uh, You'll see how things goes. Sure. Um, yeah, we don't have any more questions. We have a couple of comments over here saying great initiative. Uh, people will check that out. Uh, but you told me that you still have one last thing that you wanted to show us. Yeah, well, it's just a few things that I, I, did, I, I kept out of presentation um, to, to, to start with, just depending on time. Yeah, we um, still have uh, 10 minutes left. So feel free if you want to show us something else. Okay, let me just uh, activate these slides here. So these are just, again, additional things that fits into this, makes things easier. So um, the init stuff we have, uh, you can add like init, dash t, like init, the file, we just create a hello world. Um, there's dash t, which is template. And there's a CLI, which gives you a Pico CLI example. There's dash t for Quarkus REST. There's dash t for uh, Quarkus metrics. Uh, so we have this template system that lets you get started easily. Um, so you know, again, to, for, for beginners. Um, in the future, I want to make it so that giving a list of dependencies, go look for, find some examples. But you know, this is what we have right now. Um, someone asked about dependency, uh, depend, uh, transit dependencies. Another question that thing is like, how do you handle multiple repositories? Uh, so you can have your custom repository, like an internal one. So you just say slash slash repos, some ID equals uh, the URL. 
uh, and we uh, I bundle in a bunch of repos like there's JBoss, there's Google's, there's Red Hat's product ones. There are, um, I think I have a um, there's two more I have. I forgot what they are. But these like these short hand names for uh, Android, right? For for um, for that kind of thing. Uh, the, like these common repositories, instead of having to remember and put this whole long thing in, uh, they just kind of in there. Um, if you, for some reason, doesn't like this slash slash thing for dependencies, uh, I also support the, the what's called grape, uh, Ruby grape uh, annotations, where you can say stuff like grab solver maven central, like this is like slash at repos. Um, and uh, grapes is this thing where you, uh, you know, exact same thing, just using annotations, which is more strongly typed, but also more verbose. So, but you can choose which one you want to do. They, they treat it the same way. Um, oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, the, the secure one. So, but just, you know, so this would actually use uh, settings XML for auth uh, authorization if you, if you have that kind of need. Um, this one is that I can, you'll notice here slash slash depth is not a GAV. This is actually a GitHub URL. So this is kind of like Go style dependencies where you point to a Git repository, or a Git repository and it will get uh, the thing from there. Um, what it does behind the scene is uses Jitpack, which is this service that can take a GitHub URL and build it and if it's a traditional Gradle Maven project, it will give you the, the dependencies. Um, so a, a great way of, of, of distributing, uh, trying out uh, different things um, without having to, again, have to use the whole Maven Gradle uh, setup. Um, the Java shell I've done, I showed before, but just, you know, if you wa really want to stream it down to not have any classes and stuff, uh, you can do that. Uh, and, and, and the thing it, which I just it blows my mind that Java's J shell doesn't support arguments or anything. So with JBang, you have it. Um, and by the way, another question people uh, tend to ask when they get into it, like, do we support piping, like, you know, pipe uh, input and output? And yes, we do. Um, oh, there we go. Uh, another uh, crazy little thing is once you get to the point that you're using Java for writing these scripts, you realize, hey, how, how about stuff like Git extensions or kubectl or any of these command line extensions? Um, and I, 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 as a proof of concept, there's a, a link here that I can actually write kubectl uh, extensions. Um, and, and this is just shown output that uh, if I make a, a, a file with uh, what's it called? Kubectl dash example. Then it will be picked up uh, as a cube uh, cube extensions, and that works. So now I can extend these different tools uh, with all my Java, you know, features. Um, and those those other like five things are just like more exotic use cases. Um, I just wanted to highlight if we had the time. So yeah, that's yeah, it. wonderful. Those are the five things. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> yes, I think that people really enjoyed the session, and uh, I'm guessing that uh, uh, people will try it, at least from some of the comments that we're seeing here on, on, on Slack. So great great job on that, and uh, hopefully you'll get to 1.0 uh, pretty quick. And uh, remember, uh, you can help uh, Max and uh, everyone else to uh, move JBank forward, but just contributing to the GitHub repo, right? And I'm pretty yep. sure that Max will uh, be very grateful for you to go over there and help. Um, I'll, spread, I'll, I'll spread the word. Like, let yes. people know that this thing is safe. Yes, That's and uh, yes, just please try it. And if you find some, some issue, just help out Max or just point out the issue. And I'm pretty sure that Max uh, will uh, figure that out for you. Yep. Okay, so that, that, that closes the session for today. Uh, so thank you so much, Max, for being here uh, with us. I, I know that it was the first time on the VJUG. I hope that you can return anytime soon. I hope you had some fun. Sure. Um, wonderful. We also have uh, fun having you, and we're very grateful for you to have be uh, here with us. Uh, so without any uh, more topics for today, I'm just going to let everyone go. Remember, we're going to have the next session next week. And next week, we're going to have uh, another colleague of ours. You probably know him, Jonathan Vila. 
Uh, and we're going to talk us about test containers and it's going to be presented by Oleg. So Oleg, my good friend, and then Jonathan, my also good friend, I'm going to present next week uh, on 23 of September. So uh, feel free to uh, attend that one as well. So thank you so much for joining us today, uh, everyone, and see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>